this there way. We there we go. You know, it's a little bit different for me. So I just got back from Google I.O. where I had the incredible chance to sit down with Sundar Pichai, the CEO of Google, and ask him some heavy hitting questions only moments right after the event just ended. Except I had an ingenious plan because- Pretty much every question we talked about today was made with Gemini. Oh wow. <laughs> so this is how it all went down. With Google demonstrating a strong commitment to making AI accessible, what specific steps is Google taking to bridge the digital divide and ensure that AI benefits everyone, regardless of their access to technology or resources? A few different ways, right? I think, I think it's a very important question. The essential nature of Google itself, our products are widely used. Mm -hmm. So when we bring AI to search and we make search better, that itself helps with the digital divide, right? Like, you know, it, it reaches more people than pe you know, people realize. But we have a whole range of efforts. You saw today how we are using AI to help develop better tutors, mm -hmm. right, with, with our learning models. So those are all ways by which we're thinking about the digital divide. When we built Chromebooks, the whole reason we started Chromebooks because we wanted to build more affordable laptops so that more people could use it in classrooms. Mm -hmm. So both by making our products free and widely available, investing in technology, we work very hard to create cheaper smartphones, mm -hmm. more affordable laptops. We're constantly doing that to bridge access. And I view AI the same way. You know, a lot of our powerful AI models are just free. You know, you, Gemini is free to use. So I think that's one way. But we also invest in, so for example, we are thinking about how to use AI for things like flood forecasting. That is, predicts floods in many parts of the world, or we are using it in places to diagnose diseases in a much more cheaper, personal way. So we are constantly thinking about how to use AI to bridge the divide. Well, I'd just say the classroom example honestly blew my mind when you had multiple presenters yeah. kind of teaching the student in that case how to go about problems. I yeah. mean, I was thinking that after I graduated college, how everything's now coming out right after I finished it is like, that would have helped a lot in terms of, I would say, counting. But that access point is amazing for many people who might not have access to educational yeah. sources or things in general, if in low-income areas. I, I really liked it a lot. And this kind of dives more into the next question I have is that with an ever more powerful AI like Gemini, how will Google address potential biases and ensure responsible development? I think, I mean, this is a very important question. And so, I think the way we do it is by when you're developing, building in all the right safeguards, extensive red teaming, uh, and we're getting better at doing that. Then I think rolling it out carefully where, that's why we have Google Labs, we'll put the product out, get a few people to use it, get feedback from external users, consult a wide range of groups, and take all that feedback in. I think that's how you make progress here. And when we, if you ever get it wrong, acknowledge it and do, go to work, <laughs> work and do it better. Uh, but I think it's an iterative process. I think Google is held to a high bar, rightfully so. I think that also helps us, you know, I think we know we have that high bar. And so, and that, that means getting, uh, being societally responsible. Mm -hmm. So I think it's an important part of getting it right. I mean, personally, I use Gemini in terms of search and Google search, and I've been utilizing it more and more to come as it's been improving. And I've noticed myself, I guess, with feedback coming from consumers, how much more accurate and concise it's gotten over the years. And, I use it to find information from my sources if it's about Android devices yeah. or about other devices you guys are coming out in the future. I'd love that answer, honestly. How will Google uh, actively mitigate the risk of the overdependence and ensure the approach that values both human ingenuity and AI capabilities? In everything we do, I think we are thinking about AI. How does it benefit humanity? If you build tools, it needs to work in a way that makes your life a bit easier. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and I think getting that order is important. Today, the way I think about all the AI we are building is to give you that assistant, that collaborator, mm -hmm. that partner when you need to do your work. I think as long as we keep that you know, approach, I think we'll end up in the right place. And so that's how I think about it. This is going more in terms of I guess my, what I talk about mainly on a daily basis, and it's kind of going to Android, even though I think Android wasn't the biggest talking point of today's presentation, but you guys were talking a lot about new AI and Gemini voice prompts and features coming to it. After today, what do you think is a long-term vision of Android going over the next couple of years? I feel like we are at the early stages of being able to rethink the operating system. The fact that, first of all, you know, your phone, when you're using it, should be more aware of what you're looking on on your screen, what's in the world around you, and what we showed as Project Astra. I think that needs to come alive in your Android yeah. experience. So I think, uh, I think 
you know, directionally, that is exciting to me. Over time, I mean, today, your phone, you do a lot of the work. You have to decide which application to open, what to do. The phone itself can be more intelligent, helping you organize your life and helping you go about your day-to-day -day life and supporting you in that. I mean, I think Android has changed so much because my first Android device was a Galaxy Tab 10.1 oh on... Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, a very long time ago yeah. on Android 3 Honeycomb. Yeah. And I've just been watching over the years. I mean, we don't do the dessert names anymore, anymore which yeah. I mean, personally, I wish we did, but yeah. <laughs> uh, it's changed so much. And every year, especially with Pixels, we're seeing a lot of change in how we use our phones. And I, I think this is a perfect segue to Project Astra in general. Yeah. How do you think, in terms of Project Astra, is it going to change the way we use our Android devices? Because now we're doing talking to the phone to another level that we haven't seen before, like we have with Google Assistant. You should join and help us build Android <laughs> and Pixel, but you know, I think you're thinking about it the right way. You know, Pixel itself was one of the first phones to really incorporate AI, the way we made our camera work better mm -hmm. and how you take photos better with computational photography, right? And so we've always understood that. I'm hoping in the context of Pixel or any Android device, you know, you're able to easily invoke mm -hmm. what is effectively Astra, which will be in Gemini. Mm -hmm. And at any point you want, it could be because you're doing something on your screen, you're working on a document and you just need it to help you, or you've gone to a restaurant, you want to point it at a food and say, is, does this have any allergies I should be worried about? Mm -hmm. Right, so that's the possibility. Mm -hmm. and so how do you bring that to life is what we're going to go work on. Yeah, I mean, I'm personally so excited to see what's coming out with that uh, because me, as I said, I've been using it for better part of my whole life. With Gemini Nano being on device with Pixel and S24 devices, how difficult was it to miniaturize that to be on those devices from what we've seen with the Gemini model overall? Yeah, it's definitely a challenge. I mean, it's easy to make smaller models, but how do you pack as much capability into it? It's definitely a, a challenge, but I think it's something we are good at, using the larger models to distill and train smaller models. I'm excited about what we are, what we are doing with the Nano Path. We'll do a lot more there in the future. I think this last question is kind of pertaining to this announcement, but more of in a playful way. Did any of the Google teams and your or yourself come up with any funny or unexpected use cases of these new AI models that y'all announced today? You know, in the past, we wouldn't have done it, but like sometimes like we took the whole IO script <laughs> and we put it and said, how many times did we use the word AI yeah. today in the keynote? And mm. like, you know, it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's a simple one, <laughs> but it's the kind of natural way in which we are doing these things now. I mean, that's a good example of a funny one I didn't expect the team to do. I honestly, when it, we're going through that end of presentation, I was like, you know what, so I took this video and threw it into it, and then you guys had that last part. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, I was literally thinking about that myself. <laughs> but thank you so much for the interview. Thanks, Miles. <laughs> Great talking to you. I really just interviewed the CEO of Google. <sighs> what?